We're going to go over some basic features of our valve spring tester today. Here's your desktop icon. You'll double click on it to start it. That desktop icon will be there when you first install the program. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a blank sheet of paper here. And uh, we could start a new test by clicking on File. We could open an old test, take a look at it. Or we're going to do what we're going to do here is do a quick check. And you can see here, since we just got the program, it says we have some calibration numbers that are zero. That we have to enter some calibration numbers. Calibrations are the numbers that tell the program how many volts is equal to how many pounds of force or how many inches of travel. You do that here by clicking on settings, tester calibration here. And eh, some numbers are entered in for some reason. But uh, here's the calibration sheet you'll get from Performance Trends. Spring tester calibration sheet. These are the important numbers down here, these numbers in red. These four numbers have to be plugged into the program. So we're going to go up here, and those numbers are already correct. Then type in factory calibration. I'm going to pause the program. OK, we've got the numbers plugged in. And uh, for the type of electronics you're going to use here, most all of you will be using the Performance Trends black box. It's, we call it the mini black box now. But it's that first choice down here. And getting it connected can uh, take some time. You're not sure which COM port and such. So what we got here is this Find It button. You click on Find It, and it says make sure that your power is plugged into your mini black box. There's a separate power cable that goes in the side. And it's hooked up to your computer's COM port or through a USB adapter. So do you want to continue? And uh, we say yes. And here it said it found the COM port on COM1. So it loads in COM1. And basically, now you're ready to rock. We got everything loaded in. We're going to click on back. So do you want to save your changes? Say yes. And it says they've been updated and saved. OK. Now we can go and do our quick check. Now, two points about when we were making demo movie files like here. One is we put the computer on a fairly low resolution. That makes uh, things look a little more grainy, look a little bit bigger than you might see. But um, um, we have to do that to keep the demo files fairly small, the memory used fairly small. A second thing is with data loggers, because we're recording the screen, and trying to record data, both of them which have to be done fairly fast, is a compromise. And the data that I will record when I'm recording on the screen is not going to be very accurate and it's possibly going to come up with error messages. But we're just doing this to show you how things work, so bear with us. So um, here we are ready to test, and I'll show you here if I move my spring tester. We're getting readings. and. Um, I'm going to switch now and show you a few features in the spring tester itself. Here we got our little webcam. And here's a spring tester. When you get it, you're going to want to nail it down real tight. We got a clamp here to a fairly heavy bench. If you're working with big springs, it's pretty easy to really crank on this, and you might tip the bench over. So make sure that's securely fastened down. Here's a typical spring. This for demo, this is a small spring, so I won't have that happen. And uh, you just place it on the platform. These two surfaces, uh, we take a lot of care to try and make sure they're real parallel to each other. They're set screws for adjustment. This is all machined here and stuff. And what you do is when you test the spring, you'll just basically you'll press F1 on the computer keyboard. You'll crank the spring down to bind. You'll give it a little bit more oomph in the bind and then release it. And it'll be about that fast. Place the spring on there. Get it somewhat centered. Pre I'm sorry. Press F1. Crank it into bind. Get a little bit more. So we got a good bind measurement. And release it. And you're done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this on the computer screen. Show you what it looks like on the computer screen. When I press F1 here, or click on record, I'm going to press F1 because it's easier for me on the keyboard. You press F1, you can see the time starting to advance. Got my spring in there. I'm going to take it into bind, give it a little bit more oomph, release it, and it says we got some errors. But the only reason we're getting the errors is because of the recorder. You can see the time kind of steps and goes in, in jerks and stuff. Um, 
And that's because we're recording on a screen. But um, we still have enough numbers here to show you what things will look like. For example, here you can type in your seated height and your open height for this spring, and it'll show you the force at seated and open height. It's got our bind height. The difference between bind height and open height is the clearance. And here's the spring rate between these two, between seated height and open height, we have a 276 pound per inch spring. Now a nice feature of our software is, let's say you made a mistake here. Let's say that's not supposed to be 1.65, it's supposed to be 1.625. That's still telling us we don't have enough data, the data stored behind the scenes. But you can see here, it instantly updated things. We've got the f new force for that new height. Another feature in the quick check is table. You click on table, and you can see because we're recording, things are a little slow. And here we have, for this spring, all the heights and the forces at those heights. So we can test another spring. Or if you want, you can play around with this a little bit, say that this is wrong. It's not supposed to be 1.2, it's supposed to be 1.15. And you get the new force at that height and the new clearance. And you can see the rate has slightly changed because we're going through a slightly little bit of different data. And the, that will definitely change the spring rate. So let's uh, look at one neat feature of this thing. And uh, you saw here when you clicked on table, we can quick test several springs and fill in the table. I'm going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the program so we can get some fairly good data. I'm going to quick test several springs. So I'm going to pause. So what I did is I tested, what I did just now is I tested eight springs. I put each spring in there, ran through the cycle. I mean, pressed F1, ran through the cycle. And it took me maybe about a minute to do eight springs. And uh, you can see down here it says uh, it's ready. The next spring it's going to do is spring nine. But let's go see what these uh, springs look like. We click on table. And this is how we got the thing started by quick test several springs. But we can rank these springs, rank it by seated force. Here we got a table, here's a seated force. Here's the spring numbers, one through eight. And here's their ranking. And you can see now we get no errors when we're not recording on the screen. The, the, we can concentrate, the computer can concentrate on the electronic data logger and we get good data. And here's uh, the highest seated force of 69 and the number eight was 67. And what other options we got here? We can rank it by spring rate, going from a high of 290.7 to a low of 285. And we can show all columns in the table. So here you see the, the seated force, open force clearance, the bind height. And we can stretch this whole screen out, no errors. And if you wanted, you could print this now. I'm sorry, we'll get our table back here. This is where you print. Click on print, you have a nice little hard copy of these results. So these are some of the features you can do with just the basic version of the software or the quick check screen.